Hey, everybody. Well, glad to have you with us. And this is a, a very special and unusual kind of office hour session. And I'm only on here because I haven't introduced some of these folks to our tax pro marketer family. Some of you know a couple of these ladies really well, but some might be new to you, even though they're very close to us and have been kind of in our behind the scenes team culture for a long time. But I wanted to just introduce you, the, the ladies here who are going to talk about productivity strategies for working mothers, really working parents. But they're, So Troy and I talked about this as a topic because it came up in our weekly team meetings that we do. There's about 20 of us here at Tax for Marketer. We do weekly team bonding conversations. And we went through a series on productivity. And as we did, the entire notion of the different dynamics that, that mothers and parents in particular, but not just mothers, but parents who are home in the, with children or working in the office, as some, some others do, some of the different pressures that being a parent brings to the table. But we also wanted to highlight mothers because it's not necessarily a fair thing, but I think there's some extra pressure that mothers feel that they internalize, what have you, due to societal norms, whatever it might be, just sometimes biological realities, dealing with young children in particular that, that you know, fathers don't really have to deal with. And so we wanted to take the time to center just a few of our working moms. There's others on our team who are also um, mothers. And we just, we grabbed these three ladies. They're all a part of our leadership team, so to speak, and wanted to let them have the microphone and share a little bit of what they shared in the context of our entire company for the sake of our clients. And then those who are watching this later on, all of our members uh, on taxpromarketer.com. There's a lot to say, and there's going to be a conversation that they're going to have about how to manage also other, you know, working parents, working moms. And I'm, I've given them permission. They know this. Troy has as well for them to talk dirty about us, mistakes <laughs> we've made, things that we maybe do well, things that we don't do so well, but to just have the conversation and just kind of open the kimono on this, on this reality. So we... Anyway, there is just some housekeeping stuff here. For those of you who are watching this video after the fact, this obviously doesn't apply. But if you are watching, we are doing this on a webinar format instead of a, a meeting format. There are a variety of reasons why we did that. But that also gives you the ability to have, there's a Q&A panel. And I want to encourage people to use the Q&A and not just the chat. We'll pay attention to the chat too. But use that Q&A because what that does is it keeps the question organized so that we can actually address them. And they can talk and talk and talk and then look at the questions and any chat stuff will just kind of go by the feed. We'll just sort of like, it'll put it out of view. That said, use the chat. That's fine too. But if you really want your question to be addressed, put it in the Q and A. All right. Enough from me. Like I said, I want to get out of the way, but I want to introduce these ladies that I've got here. First of all, and I'm just going to go in the order of what I see on my screen. You guys might see something different, but the right next to me is Jody Skipper. And Jody is our longest tenured, you know, person on this recording. Not quite our longest tenured uh, employee. I think you are like fourth longest, leaving me aside. But you've been with you've been with us here for over a decade. Is that about right, Jody? Uh, yeah, I need to go back and actually look at the date. <laughs> Jody, I think has maybe nine. Nine years or so. Maybe something like that. But Jody is like one of my favorite. I mean, they're all one of my favorites. But Jody is. Uh, She's in an interesting role here now because her she's worn so many hats in our company over the years. She's been a writer. She's been a strategist. She's been a project manager. She's been a supervisor. She's been lots. She's in the beginning was just a doer. I mean, she's she's done not just a doer. I hate that I just said that. You know what I mean? She was more in the trenches of like actual, you know, grindy work than she is now. She's She is our director of content, basically. And she interfaces with all the team that we have, myself included. She tells me what to do a lot in terms of writing, in terms of how we communicate to our clients and how we communicate on behalf of our clients. She organizes sort of our content calendar and what topics we take up and what we don't and does a lot of fact checking and making sure that our team is putting out the level of content that we really care about. I mean, as you, if you're a client, you know, we have super high standards and Jody uh, is the one that really drives that and makes sure that um, those standards are, are kept at the level that they should be. 
Next on my screen is Becca Grootman. And Becca also wears a variety of hats. Now, Becca, you might recognize the last name. A lot of you know Becca because she is um, one of the key figures in our client support team. And she's also now talking to a lot of people who are interested in becoming clients. I guess our sales uh, sales role of sorts. She works alongside Christian there and then works alongside Catherine and Kayla and Jen and a variety of people in our kind of client support, client communications department. She doesn't really have like the fancy title, but everybody on our team knows that she's the boss basically has the privilege to be married to our director of innovation, Ben Grootman. And it's kind of a, a funny thing. It was a big risk to bring her on quote unquote, because you know, I'm employing now a husband and a wife team. And it, it like, if I screw up, like I lose two employees, right? So <laughs> put some pressure on me, right? Fortunately, it's been about three years. I haven't yet screwed up in such a way that I can't fix it. I have screwed up many times, but Becca is- But who's counting? But who's counting? Right. I'm sure, not <laughs> Becca. I'm sure Becca I mean, is not counting. Yeah, Becca, she'll say, yeah, 11 times. Um, <laughs> but Becca, uh, you guys will see, she just- incredible. She's a leader. She is a mother. Oh, I should have said Jody's a mother of two and uh, married to a farmer. You might've heard us talking beforehand. She is also, she's got a bunch of different side projects. So that's one of the things that Jody's bringing to the table here is Jody's an entrepreneur and she, she's on a salary with us here. And I'll get to Becca in a moment. She, she's on a salary with us here. She has her own contracting company where she does writing and projects for a variety of different kinds out, of businesses outside of our industry. She's also the business manager and business developer for the, the farm that she and her husband run, which is a working, profitable farm dealing mostly in sheep and stock in Michigan. All right. And she has two children, Noah and Faith, and they are, Noah is 12? 12, 12 yeah. and 10. Yeah. And uh, Becca has four children and she gives us only the time where they're at school. And so she's also on a salaried part-time role, but we get a little bit more of Becca's time it's, than we do Jody's. And she is mother of four. Her children, let's see if I can get this right. Kennedy's 13. And next is North, Nathaniel. Yeah, yeah. And he is 11, right? Oh, it's in it's consecutive. So 13, 12, 11. Oh, oh, okay. So you had them all right together. Okay. And then Sweet Pete, who's, who's eight, right? Almost. Yeah. Almost eight. Okay. So anyway, you guys will hear a lot more from her. I need to shut up. I'm talking too long. Virginia Brock, who was here. The, so Becca is here in the office. If you see me walking behind her, it's because I want to I wanna mess with her. But she's here in our tax for marketer kind of main office in Kansas City. Eugenia was for a long time. Eugenia Brock is our director of operations. And she pretty much runs everything in the company. And she was a math major. She's fluent in Russian. She grew up in like Moscow and Florida. She is brilliant operational mind. Her parents are half Ukrainian, half Russian. So she's been a little distracted in the last, the last month, unfortunately. So I don't want to make light of that. That's a real thing. But th that's such a real thing that she and her husband have moved to Turkey and live in Antalya, Turkey, and are there serving the, ref the Russian and Ukrainian refugee community uh, in the midst of this conflict. While she is a homeschooling mother of three uh, boys that are amazing, including one through adoption. And uh, her boys are some of my favorite boys on the planet. Let's see if I can get their ages right. Let's see, Samuel is nine? No, no, it's way older, he's 11. Eugenia, she's not gonna correct me. Did I, did I freeze? I can hear you, but maybe okay. you should just introduce. I think she might be having some technical difficulties. Okay. That's fine. You might be muted, Eugenia. No, you're not on our side. We'll, we'll get to you. You might have to come out, come in. But she got two, three boys, a director of operations. She is living in overseas, managing a ton. And we have not missed a beat since she has kind of moved overseas about four months ago. So I'm going to shut up and let you guys take it. And unless there's anything else that you want me to say, Becca. No, I think that's great. Is Eugenia, are you able to hear us now? I am now. Yeah. You guys dropped okay. out for a, a second. I'm not sure what happened. Sorry. Okay. No, that's okay. We he said was, amazing was, things. Yeah, we said amazing yeah. things. Um, <laughs> all right. I'm going to leave and uh, let you guys run it from here. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks Nate. Nate. Thanks for the yeah. intro. All right. Well, Eugenia, he was trying to guess your kids' ages. What was the, what are the ages of your boys? 
Uh-oh. Uh, that's okay. I think we lost her again. We'll keep yeah, going. That's okay. That's all right. Well, like Nate said, super glad for all of you that are present with us today and that will get, that will also be joining in at different points when we load this recording up on your members area. So those of you that I know that Phil already dropped a question in there, this is going to be um, really great too. We'll definitely, I'm just really excited because you're either joining here because you are a working mom. You know, there's so many different, you know, perspectives of this. You are a working mom. You want help with knowing how, how we do it and giving examples from all of our different lives, things that have worked for us. And, or you are a business owner and you're trying to eagerly learn how to manage those who are in your business, who are working for you, around you, or just rubbing shoulders with other professionals who are working moms. It's, I, this is like a super big part of my own life. And just, I have such a, a heart for those who are in the, you know, who are working moms. Mm -hmm. And so really excited and thankful for all of you who are attending Eugenia. Hopefully we'll get back in here in a little bit, but to start, just wanted to kind of give some perspective of, there's a lot of things that we could cover, but maybe Jody, we'll start off with you with, I know you, you know, Nate mentioned you have so many plates spinning and a lot of us who have families, there's lots of plates spinning. So maybe give some input on the different roles you play throughout mm -hmm. your day. And then we can kind of, I'll ask you further questions. If you hit on something, I think we should expound on. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. I that's, appreciate the way you set that up. Cause I do want to speak to both the moms and the other business owners who want to support, you know, the working moms in their office. I, I definitely appreciate that. But yeah. So just a little bit of background. I've been a working mom since I became a mom. I, I had my uh, first child 12 years ago and I was working uh, in marketing. I've been working in marketing this whole time and I was uh, full-time at the time and then I had my son and then I moved to part-time. In that context, I, I was working out of the home and late and then I took a little bit of a break, had my, had my second child, the daughter, and then when she was maybe one or two years old, then I started working part-time from home and I've been working from home for the last... 10 years. So most of my, you know, comments and perspectives will be from that, from that angle. Like I said, I've worked mostly part-time from home and I've been, so Nate introduced a little bit of me, you know, I work with Tax Pro Marketer. I have my own, my own business that I run as well as running the marketing and management for our farm. So Becca, great question in terms of what does my day look like? So I'm getting up in the morning, helping, you know, everyone get myself ready, get the kids ready. I have an amazing husband who is very supportive of what I do, without which I would not be able to do this. I think we can all, all of us who have really supportive husbands would say that. It's definitely a team effort in what we're doing. So he's making breakfast. I'm helping to get everyone ready to go. One of the things we've really had to lean into to make this work is to teach our kids independence. And so our kids mm -hmm. are getting themselves ready in the morning. They make their own lunches at night. They're getting their bags packed. They have chores. They have barn chores. Out on the farm, they go and do that. They come back inside, we're eating breakfast, connecting. They get out on the road, we're running in the carpool. I jump into to my work. I'm working during the day. Sometimes I'm out in the barn helping sheep. You know, some then I'm switching hats from roll to roll to roll throughout the day. At lunchtime, I'm getting out meat for what's for dinner because I'm thinking about that. Sometimes running laundry through the day while I'm running things. But I, and I share that just, just to give a picture of the different kind of roles that we're all managing, trying to make this work. My kids come home. I try to get my work done by that time. So when they're home at, you know, 3, 30, 4 o'clock, I'm able to stop and sort of switch. And that's one of the key things that's really helped me is just setting up those real clear boundaries in terms of when is my work time and when is my family time. Obviously working from home, there's overlap mm -hmm. and we can talk about more of that later, but I think healthy boundaries have been just one of the keys to making this work. When I'm at work, I'm at work. And when I'm not, I am not checking in. I'm not checking messages. I'm not doing any of the work things unless, you know, there's always exceptions for emergencies, but I try to keep real strong boundaries between the two. And then, in, you know, in the evening I'm making dinner, connecting with my kids, we're doing athletics, all the things that parents are doing in the evening. So I try to keep it separate. The second thing I think that mentioned the boundaries. And then the second thing would be the training of the kids, teaching them independence. I started, I've gone through the range of when my kids were like, what were they like three and one, you know, when I was started this latest stint and now they're 10 and 12. And so we've gone through a large range of seasons in terms of how I am managing them. So it's, it's lots of changing seasons, changing hats, but what we've had to do is really teach them about 
my, while I've been uh, keeping my own proper boundaries is teaching them their own boundaries. Mm -hmm. You know, what does work time look like? Yes, you can come and ask questions. I can't, but I can't engage in long conversations. Like they understand all these things. They, you know, they have a schedule. They have rhythms, especially during the summer. We really have to work at this when they're not at school, they're at home. They have schedules that they keep. This is when you're doing your chore time. This is when you're practicing piano. This is when you're, this is play time. This is reading time or whatever it is. They make their own schedules. That's something I've, I've done just in these mo more recent years as they're older. So I think those two things have really been probably two of the, the keys, the boundaries and training, training length of the kids to make it work for me. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Jody. Eugenia, are you able to chime in now at this point? I am, yes. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. No, that's okay. No. Yeah, no, I just basically wanted to give you guys the floor to kind of explain what your day looks like. And then if you hit on some key points, we'll make sure to come back and uh, talk about those specifically, but just, you know, your day looks very different and you live, you know, in a different area of the world, but what, what does that look like for you? Because, you know, for all of us, we all have like different schedules we keep, you know, depending on the workplace and what that schedule looks like, the open close times, how that works. I know Jody already mentioned about the remote ability to work remote has been super uh, helpful and made this possible for her to even work as a mom and a business owner and that kind of thing. So maybe just give some input on what your day looks like and how you handle that across a, a, a work day. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'd say that for me, it's changed rapidly in recent years. And so there's been completely different lifestyles that have um, all worked with being a working mom, which has let me kind of compare them, but also realize that there's so many ways to make it work. Like that, you know, there's no one way that fits better than another way. And as you go through different seasons and your kids go through different ages and even your own role or your, whether you're part-time or full-time, all of that can, there's always like a Tetris way to make it all fit together into something that is beautiful, maybe not perfect, but something that is, that works for you and that can bring a lot of joy to both you and your family. So right now for me, that's being a homeschooling mom at the same time as working and being on the other side of the world is what's allowed me to, to do that basically, because in the mornings I can homeschool and then in the evenings on, you know, in a different time zone, it's American business hours, but for me it's evenings, I can work and uh, my husband has his time with the kids. And then I continue working after they go to bed. So for me, yeah, the, the day starts off with all family time and then around four o'clock, it's like a clear shift and that's working time after four and into the night. And I enjoy working at night. I'm a night owl. So that works for me and has, has been going pretty well. And it's, it's a chance to, to even have more focused, productive work because the kids aren't coming in to ask questions as I'm working from home and there's less disruptions. But before that, until we moved here, I was working from the office where Becca is right now. In fact, just two seats away from Becca, which I miss. And, and the kids were in school at that time. So that was like a completely different variation of it, but also worked really well. And we loved that too, where the kids would go to school, I would go to work. And by the time that it was time to pick them up, I had worked maybe six of my eight hours roughly. And then I would put in a couple more in the evenings because again, for me, working at night works really well. And that's when I can get a lot of focused time in. I would definitely agree with what Jody said that a large part of making this possible has been letting my kids be independent and possibly pushing them towards it more quickly than a lot of people would think is maybe conventional. Like thinking at what age would you expect your kids to be able to do this chore and then trying to do it a year or two earlier and it definitely wouldn't be great but it would get give them that start and actually push them into independence sooner and it's really paid off a lot that's great yeah and so for me and i know nate uh mentioned this too on the introduction my kids are in school from nine till three and so i just had when i first started with tax for marketer i had only taken on that nine 9 a.m. to noon time period because I could give that exclusively. My youngest 
the way their school is set up, they actually got out a little earlier than the older kids did. And so that was just the flexibility. And I think um, to speak to some of even the questions that have already been said, and we can land on this a little later too, but the value aspect of tax pro marketer, I knew coming in, and some of that was because my husband had worked here for many years before I did. I knew the value of the business owner and it, that it aligned with my own values. And so that was a huge um, decision piece for me in deciding to even kind of step out and say, you know, it, at different points, I've had different jobs, but to know that this was going to give me a consistency in schedule, that was huge for me to know, like, I'm going to be able to clock in. I'm going to be able to clock out. I've been a business owner. I had a store online that I did and where I was able to have that flexibility and do it when I, when my kids were sleeping, when they were younger, because obviously as the kids have those different ages, like Jody was saying, there is different requirements. There's a lot more requirements. I did not work full-time when my kids were all little. I have those first three kids were within almost three years I had the three kids I am in awe of moms who can work full-time and have those little ones because just the requirement on you but I would say that I've learned so much in knowing my value system over the years knowing what I value what I see as important and deciding to land other things to line up with those value systems and so beginning to work with tax pro marketer I knew the company the owners had that same value and I also felt like comfortable coming in knowing what I was getting into, knowing the remote aspect was a huge thing for me as a mom, being able to know that, you know, these are real humans. We're real humans. Our business owners are real humans, that kind of thing. And so that's kind of how my, you know, my work day is we get up, I spend time a few days a week. I have a set of part time where I go to the gym. That's something that I've just decided I need to give that energy and, you know, focus to getting to a gym. And that's because my husband is at home and our kids are a little early or uh, later. I'm sorry, they're a little bit older and they can be home if they need to and kind of getting things going. But like Eugenia and Jody said, they have an independence factor that we've built in since they were really little that I expect them to do things that I know that they can do. And if they kind of half can do it, then that's their aspect in bringing, bringing that to our family. And part, of, we are a family, we work together. And if we don't, things get lost, things get dropped. And so that communication aspect with my own husband, being on the same page, feeling like we're a team as a family has been a huge aspect of that. And then we get them to school. You know, they've made their own lunches, even my six, you know, my seven-year-old who makes his own lunch and it doesn't always look awesome. You know, sometimes I'm like, do you have at least a piece of fruit in there? At least make sure you're going to be filled. But then sending them to school, knowing that they're taken care of, but also the ability that if they get sick, our work, I know that I can take my work home. I can go pick them up from school. Know that I can also pick this up at home. And that kind of thing has been awesome for me. You know, they need to be picked up at three. So like Jody mentioned, everything gets focused. That's taken a lot of time, energy, and intentionality to take my head out of work and into family. And so having those clear cutoff times has been really helpful mm -hmm. for me to know, you know what, it's going to be okay if it waits till tomorrow. And so that has been a huge thing. And going back to the value system of our business and how Nate and Troy and all of our team kind of sets that value system up for themselves. So that's kind of how my day goes on and making dinner and right now we're in sports season. So I have to have a plan for dinner. I have to have those things managed well and prepped beforehand. And that's been huge for us and knowing a schedule, you know, that kind of thing. And we can hit on that in a second, but that's what our day looks like day to day. And so that has been really awesome. Do you guys have anything that you heard me say that you want to tag on to? Well, I think I did, that's so about critical. Go ahead. I did just about saying the importance of being able to take that work with you and sick kids at home and knowing that the culture of our company supports that. This kind of actually has to do a little bit with what it looked like. I think Andy was asking, right? Yes. About how, how to even market some of that from a business's perspective of being open to offering some of those things to moms that make it possible for working moms to succeed. And largely what I've seen um, us do at Tax for Marketer is letting our team know and me feeling this as a mom myself that we really value family and that every person on the team is a real person so nate and troy i'm sure most of you um listening to this know 
uh, a little bit about their story and that they have families and that they care deeply for those families and they openly share that. And so when I go into a conversation with either of them, I know that they have a high value for family and for my family as well, that they share the hard parts and the good parts and the ups and the downs. They are willing to share all of it. I mean, not to say that they are, you know, sharing all of it all the time, but there is that willingness to open up and not pretend like work is all we do and work is all that we are and family is just, you know, some inconvenience that we have to go home to. Like, that's never a part of the conversation. Family is something that is brought in as a joy and the reason that we go to work and the reason that we thrive and the reason that we want to do a good job in the first place. And so having that security of knowing that this is a place where that is highly valued and we will be taken care of allows us to then ask for what we need. And I think to a degree that that's where I was going with this for Andy's question is like letting the moms know that you're there and that you're willing and even exposing some of your own thoughts and some of your own personal life to, to be real, to be human, to be a, you know someone that you can go to allows us to come and ask for what we need. If we need a day off, I know that I can ask for one. And as someone who manages other people on the team, like I make it clear, sometimes I need a day off, you might need a day off too. And of course that comes with a, a balance to it of trusting your team and knowing that they're not going to abuse that. They're not just going to take every day off, but within our team, we've built this culture of we work really hard together so that if anything comes up, we will cover each other. It will be okay. You can take the time off that you need. You can go work from home. You can work at different hours. You can make it up later. You can just skip some work. Someone else will cover it for you because we all do that for each other and have that teamwork built. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Jody, what were you yeah. going to say? Yeah, I was just, I was similar things. I think the, the question is not work ethic with working moms. That's not the problem. You know, I think some employers have the, the I think less now post 2020 when so many people are working from home now than before, but with working moms, it's not about, are they going to get the work done? Yes, they are, but they need the flexibility to be able to do it when they can, because in addition to being an employee, they're, they're the meal planner, they're keeping everyone clothed, they're running a household, they're running the carpool, they're doing all of those things. And so communicating while also backing up the value of flexibility. And if you can support moms in that role, they will stay with you. Because I think all of us would say here, like probably that the chief reason we've stayed at Tax Pro Marketer, I mean, lots of reasons, we're not gonna try to speak for people, but people. And the team culture and the flexibility that's provided to us is the chief reason to that for that. Because we all have seasons when we enjoy our work and we don't enjoy our work and we get that. But I, and I know these two as well, have, have experienced that support from our employers to make it work for us. And just that transparency and authenticity that we're able to, we're able to ebb and flow and figure it out as we go. And it creates a powerful staying effect for working moms at company. Yes. Absolutely. And to put some answers to Andy and Phil's questions of how do you come to the table? You know, how do you, is it, you know, speaking out of turn to talk about mom friendly aspects. And I think even bigger than kind of, they touch on this a little bit, but just, just knowing and being vulnerable yourself as a business owner, that family and the value system you carry and why you do what you do, because whether it's a mom or a dad or you know, just hearing the value for family, I think coming out of the gate is a huge win as a business owner, like speaking for myself of knowing that, you know, that I'm going to value that, but I'm also coming to you looking for a job where I can give my 110% because like Jody said, it's not a work ethic thing. It's more just like, I'm going to do it well, but if I know that I'm going to be backed when the inevitable happens, when something, you know, when the need calls, I'm going to get, and I think that's what Nate and Troy kind of do with our company is they trust the culture that our company has together, more of like a family feel where we get each other's weaknesses and strengths and our striving to do excellent work and work with integrity and handle our clients well and handle the results. And that is built into our interview process where we're looking not just for an excellent work. And like Phil, you said, your priority is quality work rather than speed of production. You know, sometimes you need both. Sometimes you need a speedy answer. 
but knowing that we're all human and even the, our clients, you know, they're human and me being able to answer today within a 30 minutes of, of an email coming in and me being answered, answered tomorrow with a clearer head at the end of my workday, rather than just being like, you know what, we want to meet our needs of our clients, that kind of thing that is built into the entirety of how we do business too. And we want to re reflect that to our clients as well. And I don't think there's anything wrong or that it's speaking out of turn. If, if you have that value system, I'm not sure exactly like in interviews, you said, Andy, we should mention in interviews, if you know that it's a mom, you know, and just being able, but I, as a mom also want to know that there's going to be consistency. I've worked in jobs where it was like, you just do the work when you can. And that didn't work well for me. I felt like I was piecing together. I didn't have solid blocks of time, but it does work for other people too, where they're able to kick up and do things as they can. But for me, I just needed that consistency, but also knowing I'm going to have these situations and having that value out front for those that you're bringing in onto your team is huge and providing that culture in your office. You know, there are most of us, I think Nate would say this too, is we tend to hire workaholics. But if we don't have those structures in place, then we will work ourselves out and we won't be able to spend the time we need to on work and then not on our families either. And then it just doesn't work either way. That's kind of my thought process. Do you guys have anything else speaking to Andy or Phil's questions? I remember my interview process. You know, obviously I was a mom at the time. And so, yeah, we talked about it in the interview. There were very clear boundaries and expectations set forth. And I, then it's my choice if, if I can think I can meet that or not. But they also communicated that we know your role of life. And this is a great role for working moms. And we want to make it work for you if we can. And so just working that out together, they're willing to work with me. I'm willing to work with them. It goes both ways. So it's not just keeping it completely open-ended expectations. Like Becca was communicating are very important. So having those clearly established while also having open communication really helps. Mm -hmm. And I would add maybe that as Becca was saying that we do have a lot of workaholics on our team and that those boundaries are important in both directions, like not just to get people to do their job, but also to get people to not burn out. And one of the things that we've implemented to prevent that like rushed, quick job getting slapped together just to get it in before the deadline is that we do have a lot of PTO and some of it is required. Like we have times where we need to take time off so that we can come back refreshed and ready to do our job and have that time of a mental break, time to spend with our family so that we can give our all at our job and not burn out from, you know, just constant going, going, going. And that's been huge, especially I think for the moms on the team, obviously everyone needs to take a break and clear their mind and have time away from work. But for moms, especially, it's a chance to really get all the little things that you might not have time for normally to be able to get those little, take your kids on a fun trip or just have some alone time without the kids, even while they're in school to get the things that you need, but don't, aren't a always able to get on a regular basis. And so just making sure that we care for our team in that way, we are flexible with um, offering time off if someone needs it, obviously when their kids are sick or, you know, something comes up throughout the year, but we also have built in times where like the whole team knows that they're going to be taken care of and they're going to have that time to recover, refresh themselves and come back um, with a clear mind, ready for creative work and ready to really pour themselves into it. Yeah. And I don't, I mean, and this isn't to say, cause most of these one-off things for me personally are really one-off. Like we have these structures in place for the one-offs and it, instead of just scrambling to figure out, oh no, you know, my team member needs off and I have nothing in place to help or no one else that kind of knows a little bit about that. So now I'm stuck. Now I have a whole, you know, that kind of thing where if you have those preemptively, those structures in place where, you know, whether it's me or whether it's my husband or, a, you know, one of our men who are on staff, it's the same thing. It's not just for moms, but it's for families and having that dynamic of we work hard, but we also give ourselves to that rest time period and have structures in place that that is, you know, that is 
able to happen if, and the pressure isn't on me to solve the world's problems that day, because I know that my team um, has those values are going to be able to cover for me when they do happen, or it's not as, you know, as often as we're talking about, I think we're just hyper-focusing on this just to give some ideas there. Is that, I mean, do you guys have anything else to say to that? You know, that's good, Becca. Okay. So how about, let's talk about Jody, maybe I can ask you this, uh, time management. So for you as a mom, is there any sort of like tools you use or things you saw that failed really badly or things that you use to help you personally in the work? You know, is there a software you use or something that helps you kind of stay on task with all the different plates that you spin as a working mom? Yeah, good question. Speaking practically, I think two things came to mind as I was thinking about this. One, which has come, become very commonplace, is grocery pickup. I never liked grocery shopping to begin with. So when they started off Amen. <laughs> pickup, I was like, praise God, I will do that. And I've had a conversation with other moms about this, or some of them are hesitant to do that. And they're working moms because they don't want to pay more. Or, you know, maybe there's the selection online is not matched, you know, what you get in the store. There's definitely those dynamics going on. They're not willing to pay more. They'd rather spend their time. For me, I don't have the time to give. I'm going to pay a little more so you can do that for me. That has been a wonderful trade-off for me. Bring the groceries to my car. We'll figure it out from there. The other thing that I've, that I've used in, in particularly busy season was I hired someone to clean my house. I did this only for about a year. And again, there's budget restraints. Not everyone can do this. This was a, something we could do during that time. But just to have some, it was just a monthly thing. Someone came in, they did all the basic stuff. Now my kids all do chores. Like they have their own things that they do to help keep the house clean. Because if they didn't, like there's no way that I could do that. I've had to let, I've had to let that go. The, just the expectation of always having a clean, really well-kept house. It's just not, it, I can't do it. And I, not that I, I, like, I know that I still struggle with it, but, but so working through those mindsets, definitely part of the game. But you know, when I had someone coming in to clean my house for during that particularly busy time, it was really a blessing. And you know what? It freed me at my heart because I, you know, I think when you're in a clean environment, that's orderly feel more orderly on the inside. So it definitely helped for that. But th those are two time and time management tools that really helped me. And the other thing I'm learning, I think just even just this year, as I work through, and maybe we, we can talk about this more, Becca later is talking about some of the mental blocks and the expectations and the guilt that you're working through. I definitely, I think that's really important to, to talk about moms with, but I've started just giving myself permission to take time off to spend time with my kids because I fight through so much of that guilt of not being always present, not being always there. I try to just make extra times to do that. Like um, something as simple as signing up to um, drive and chaperone on a field trip. You know, that's perfect because number one, I'm not, I can't be near my phone or my computer so that I can check in and, and do my work. Like, no, I'm actually out of the office that day period. And I really get to spend focused, fun time with my kids and doing special things like going to museums and things like that. That's really helped me feel like I can be present. You know, again, it's just part of that mental. It's, it's a much of a time management game, as much as the physical roles and the hats as it is the, the mental game that you have to learn how to manage. Yeah. That's so good. Eugenia, do you have anything to add? Yeah, to on the topic of time management. So Troy Lakey, our COO, recommended a book to me when I was kind of trying to figure this out. I was going from part-time to full-time, or I think it was shortly after I had switched to full-time and was actually struggling with how do I fit it all in. For me, time has always been like the biggest challenge in life is just not having enough time for everything. Mm -hmm. And as I was struggling with that, he recommended a book called I Know How She Does It by Laura Vanderkam. And in the book, it may not be for everyone's, you know, personality type or interest, although since I'm speaking to largely accountants and tax professionals, it may be in your line of thinking because it's all about the numbers. Um, this researcher basically interviewed like a hundred working moms and broke down all the numbers of how they spend their time, how much do they sleep, when do they sleep, when do they have time for their kids or themselves or their work, and how do they all fit it in together? Successful working moms, I should add. And uh, I gleaned a lot from that. And one of the things I got out of it was that we really have more time than we realize. As much as I have always said, I don't have enough time for everything. 
168 hours in one week is actually a lot of hours. Even after you factor in your work hours and your sleeping hours, there's a lot left over to do something with. And there's a lot of creative ways how, um, how people structure those. And so part of like my journey over the last few years of going from completely different, one completely different to another working mom lifestyle was largely fueled by realizing that there are so many different ways to do it. And there are ways to fit in blocks of time in different areas so that you have like a full life that is fulfilled in many different areas at the same time so that you can have side projects going on and still have awesome time to spend with your kids and with your husband and alone with yourself and that it you don't have to sacrifice one of those areas for all the others and so that was huge for me that was you know a, a big tip i guess uh, that made it work for me. And then the other one that came also from that line of thinking is seeing my week as a week has helped. I am more of the type of person who likes every day to be the same. And that only got me so far. And eventually realizing that like things done in a week, if you see it all put together, it, it works a lot better. Like I can't exercise every day and I would love to. That would be the ideal for me is to have the same block of time every single day <laughs> to exercise. But that's just not going to happen. And instead of throwing my hands up and being like, well, I guess I can never exercise, realizing that two or three times a week still adds up. And in the course of the whole week, like it still means something and it's still regular and it still adds up. It's just maybe not how I would have preferred it, but it allows me to live this much more colorful life. So that was a, a pretty big thing. And then um, the third thing I learned from it was also that we do have enough time to just enjoy life and have that mm -hmm. leisure time. Often it feels like you don't have any because by the time you're done with working and doing the kids and doing the dishes and doing bedtime and doing whatever else you need to do, the paperwork or paying the bills, and then you get to the end of the day and you're tired and it feels like your whole day was spent and there was no leisure to it. There was no time to just enjoy things. But that's actually not true. There are those moments throughout. And putting my life, like mapping out one week of my life really showed me how I had way more time than I thought I did. And if I was more intentional about using those times, I could take much better care of myself so that I could be both a better worker and a better mom at the same time because I was getting that joy out of the things that I like doing, like, you know, reading or, or learning a foreign language or going swing dancing with my husband. I don't know. I, I had time to carve that out. Once I realized that I spend what feels like five minutes on the couch scrolling social media, it felt like five minutes, but when I actually started tracking it, it was over an hour. And when I realized how often that happens, it really added up. And so one of the takeaways from that for me was to make a list of what I really love. And instead of trying to like just stop sitting on the couch and doing bad things, so to speak, <laughs> instead of <laughs> on what it is that I really love that brings me to life and finding time for it. And when I started doing that, like sitting on the couch, scrolling through social media became way less tempting and way less desirable because I had something else that was much better and that was life-giving to me. So that, oh, yeah. That's so <laughs> good. It is good. I need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so a couple of things. I was thinking, uh, like, intentionality is like my biggest thing right now of just like as our kids have gotten older my intentionally ha intentionality has had to go way up just because of all the multiple schedules that I am currently mostly the one handling and one thing going into I think it was last year my husband and I decided we've got to sync our calendar like GCAL we use that like we have color coded for our family, for my personal, I have a different color for my work. I have a different color, but Ben, my husband and I are on the same page that if anything gets scheduled, we add it directly into our GCAL and we both see it every day. So I look at, I open it up. So we're able kind of like, we'll send a text message or just be like, is there anything else that wasn't added? But we're constantly, like I rely on that schedule all the time because it will get lost. I will get confused. He will specifically get confused. Instead of coming home and feeling like everything's a jumble, 
And I have such a high expectation on myself that I'll feel like a failure if I don't, if I've missed something. And part of that is like, I can do certain things to set up that space, that free space that Eugenia was even talking about is giving my mind permission for free space. If I'm more planned, which I am really good at implementing things, but maintaining it is a different thing. But if it's in the schedule, I know I'm going to do it. There's accountability because my husband can see that I'm going to do something. I'm not just flip-flopping around, which I will end up feeling drained at the end of the day because I didn't know what I was doing. What did I even get done? And then in the workplace, having goals. My direct supervisor, the people that are over me, just checking in with me. Hey, is there anything I can do to help you? Is there things that are going really well for you? And that constant check-in, that intentionality as my supervisors checking in, making sure that is the, it's the making sure you're getting things done. But at the same time, I know they really care about me. And, you know, if I'm lagging behind, it's not necessarily because I'm not working hard, but there might be other things going on. And just knowing that coming back to that culture thing that our company does. And I also wanted to speak to um, a little bit, Phil asked, said that he's trying to remove the stress from his employees of deadlines and the pressures of the tax season and carry that himself. Now, I would say, I think what the heart behind that of wanting to help your staff is super awesome. But I think one of the powerful things is knowing that, you know, our bosses value their, their rest time as well. And like, we have check-ins from our bosses that say like, what are you reading? You know, we have like our system set up on the system we use for our team communication and tasks. There's automatic check-ins on what are you reading? What are you doing? Did you do anything fun this weekend? And that's just the culture I know that not they're not just valuing it for me, they're valuing it for themselves. And I I feel more comfortable knowing like, okay, even my boss, though he will go out of his way to help me when he can, but it's a value in our company, not just with the employees. And so just Phil, you know, just being able to structure your own self that, you know, you're a workaholic, what structures can you put in place for your business where people come into your business as an employee and know his, your values, know that you value rest, know that you, you know, you're human, that kind of thing, just remembering those things as well. But going back to it, you know, sorry, I jumped over there, but the G, you know, using Google Cow, being intentional, you know, Jody uses the grocery pickup, but instead I go on Sundays after our church service, I go to the grocery store every Sunday after church, it's scheduled in, and I take one of my kids with me. And I've just decided this is one-on-one -on -one time with my kid. I'm getting groceries done. Mm -hmm. I'll pick them up an ice cream cone. And I'm not necessarily checking the tasks off, like my to-do list, but part of it is like, no, I'm structuring my time. So I'm getting engagement with my kids. I'm getting my groceries done. I'm getting out of the house and going and doing something. I'm marking something off, getting home, making our meal list for the week, but also not expecting myself. Like I'm not going to be able to do a gourmet meal for my family every single night. I used to be able to do that a little more, but I have a value for a little bit of nutrition and I'm going to try my best, you know, but to just, Becca, you're okay. Like your family's fed and just kind of getting down to what are my value values and how can I set up my life where I'm taking those valuable things off in that's how my brain works and just making sure those things are all lining up. And we do a yearly trip every January or February where we write out big projects we want to get done that year, you know, smaller things that we want to get done with the kids, sports that the kids want to get done so that we have a generalized month by month things we'd like to get done. But having some sort of setup, it doesn't mean that we're going to get through it all, but you know, something is better than nothing and it gives us those goals to reach for. Anything else you, Jody or Eugenie, want to tag off of that? I did. And, and specifically to uh, respond to Phil saying that about the language, maybe not having some of that language for vulnerability or for checking. I just wanted to add that like not everyone on our team is super gushy or ready to talk about how they feel about their weekend. We have lots of introverts on our team and definitely lots of nerds being in, in you know, a, a tech industry. So what we found on our team is that, you know, there, there is a lot of value in checking in, even if it is scheduled and routine. 
So like Becca was mentioning those automatic questions that ask, you know, did you do anything fun this weekend? Like someone can respond to that with just a photo, you know, with, with just a picture of themselves and their family out on a picnic or reading a book by a fireplace or whatever it is. Like you don't necessarily have to put in a lot of effort to be creative and someone that you're not, you can still express those things. You can still ask the same question, you know, how are you doing today? Did you do anything interesting last night or how is your family? And even if it's the same question over and over, it still expresses that care. It's still different from, did you get your work done on time? It's, it's adding in that personal touch and it's okay if it's not something that comes from an extroverted, warm personality that just makes everyone feel hugged as soon as they see you. It, more reserved people often actually have, it, it carries more meaning because you know they wouldn't be asking if they didn't care in the first place. Yeah, I mean, we have so many personalities. I know that we're like engaging and discussing a lot right now, but we have a lot of team members that are just very quiet, but they answer those questions and it kind of like takes the stress off, but it helps you get to know your team. It helps you get to know what they like to do, how you can encourage, you know, I'll go to a, a team member and, or send them a direct message that's just like, Hey, are you riding that awesome bike? You know, where, where'd you go this weekend? And it helps me as a, not just a team member, but a friend kind of engage with that part of that creative part of, you know, I know this one coworker of ours, you know, that's on our team that got a new bike. And so just keeping up with those things without there's this long, like I have to come in and ask everyone a question, but just engagement there definitely helps that team dynamic grow too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I know we're coming up on an hour here. So how do you guys to kind of cap us off here? How do you guys feel like, or what do you, I know we kind of touched on this in the beginning, but what do you guys feel like your current employer has done well to support you in your role and what could they do better or things we've even discussed as a company to make things better and easier for working moms? I can go first. I've covered several of the big things, but a few of the specific smaller things, being flexible with adjusting hours when needed. And again, this comes from a place of trust, knowing that, you know, we have a close communication within our team. And so we're, things aren't going to be abused, but, but we do have this open availability to adjust hours. If you have a life change, like you have more kids or even your kids are going through something, you're going through something, you're having a rough season, I know I can easily ask to work a few less hours a day and that won't be met with, you know, it won't be received negatively because the company cares for me as a person and for how I'm doing. I know I can request that and it will be met with a lot of grace and vice versa. So if I need to take a season of working less, that's fine. And knowing that I have the freedom to do that brings a lot of security and just a lot more willingness, like a lot more loyalty, honestly. Like that is, as Jody said, one of the reasons that a lot of us stay with Tax for Marketer, aside from the biggest one, which is the people and the, the family that we have within it, is also just that flexibility. And then another little one that is easy to implement, but I think means a lot, is that kids are welcome to stop by the office. And I read that a while back in a book somewhere that for working moms of like, and working parents, dads too, that if you feel like you're working a lot and not getting enough time with your kids, you can obviously you need to spend time with your children in their world, playing with them and reading to them and all those good things, but try also bringing them into your world and so much to them to just see what you do every day, even if it's just a glimpse. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I love is that when we were living in Kansas City, I would often have my kids stop by, like my husband would come by with them or I would stop by and the kids knew a lot of my coworkers. They know Nate, they know Troy, they would wave hi, get a soda from the fridge and be off on their way, but it meant a lot to them. And it was a way to make our, our life more of a, a team within our family that the kids got to see where I was too. Yeah, I think that's helpful for them even growing up and growing that independence is seeing what kind of work area and atmosphere and culture that we have that we so value that there is that out there and them seeing it you know they're watching us they're watching us as 
um, professionals and, and watching how we deal with our time, our management, our workload, what we do when we get home, they're watching those things and they're the future of the professionals that are going to go to work and get jobs or need their taxes done, like those kind of things like that. They're, they are those people coming up. And so it's super important to have that um, culture of being able to come in and this is a family friendly place. And we have drinks in our fridge that the kids can come. They're like, you guys have the best drinks in your fridge. They can come get like a soda or some kind of drink out of the fridge that that's just part of the abilities, you know, that uh, the open door mindset that we've had, you know, at this company. So that's been really great too. I agree with that. Yeah, I think another thing too that they've done well is affirmation. Because I think one thing that all working moms struggle with is mom guilt. We are not always present for all the things. And we don't have always the cleanest house. And meals are sometimes happen at 8.30 at night, you know? So I know for me, like I battle with this regularly, like in an mm -hmm. ongoing way. As my kids grow, you know, you feel you watch other moms who are not working Maybe they're home. They're going on all the field trips. You know, they're making the chili, the crock pots full of chili yes. at the potlucks. They're doing all the things and I am not doing any of that, you know, very little. So there's a lot of the, where the sacrifices that we make are always very in front of our eyes. And so one thing that has helped with that is when my bosses like give affirmation, like even when we're just preparing you know, for this, for this discussion and having this webinar, uh, Troy Lakey was, we we're just talking through some of the different topics and he just acknowledged his own recognition of what we do and how it is very unique. And just saying to all three of us, like you guys do manage this so well, which is so encouraging to hear. Cause I often feel the opposite. Like I'm not doing this very well. I see all of my failures and all of my shortcomings. And all the things I'm not doing. And so when I hear from my boss, like, no, you're actually, I think you're from my perspective, you're doing this well in the workplace and what I see what's happening in your family. So that's been really helpful. And I think too, what's helped me is just remembering those positive things. It helps when my employer brings them up every now and then, but also just being intentional. Becca, you talked about being intentional earlier, like being intentional to focus on what, what I am giving my kids. We've all talked about the independence we've been able to foster in them. And Becca, you're talking to just the preparation for life, like just setting life expectations, what it looks like for all of us to work together and pitch in like the, the team dynamic, you know, we work together as a family, just all those things. I think trying being intentional about noticing those things, sewing into those things, like you were talking about Becca with being intentional about your grocery shopping, like, um, so just remembering and, and, and talking about it with your husband and, and with your coworkers, what you are gaining, because I think, and, and I, I'd love to hear from you guys too, just how you deal with that, those expectations that are set in our culture. We all come from different cultures, backgrounds. We're all working within different cultures and backgrounds. So we all have different expectations that we have to manage. But so those are the, some of the things that, that I, that helped me as I manage the expectations of the culture around me here and my environment, which is very much of a a stay at home mom culture. And you see on all the social media, all the special cakes that the moms are making for their kids. Like some of you may do that. Like you too, you too may do that. I can't do that, but I feel guilt about it. You know, but anyway, it's just all the pressures that we put on ourselves that are just very unrealistic, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. Eugenia, do you have anything to add on to that? One of the big like mindset perspective shifts that helped me with that mom guilt actually also came from Troy. Uh, as you guys can tell, I've had a lot of conversations with him about it as I like learned my way forward in being a working mom. And one of the things he mentioned also as a working parent that I've kind of, I probably won't repeat the way he told it to me, but this is how I've internalized it and processed it over the years is that as someone who struggles with perfectionism and idealism, I would often have such high expectations for what it was to be a good mom. And I would tell myself, I'm not expecting to be perfect. I just want it to be really good. But my idea of really good was unattainable, like not by a long shot. And what he told me was, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it can be amazing. And I've kind of hung on to that phrase ever since of like, it's not perfect, but it is amazing this little scrap of time that I've carved out with my kids 
is not perfect and I wish it was picture perfect and I wish you know it was a homemade baked cake or whatever it is <laughs> for their you know, for this special occasion or I wish they were wearing clothes that matched mm -hmm. and you know we could take a photo and it would all look lovely you know but none of that is the way that it is and it's a little chaotic and someone's crying in the background because they didn't get what they wanted and I just snapped at someone five minutes ago but you know this is our family and it is amazing and we are spending good time together and in the midst of all the chaos and the noise and things being not perfect it is truly amazing and I've just kind of hung on to that whenever I start feeling that guilt of I it should be better I could do more if I just shoved other things aside I could do more and it could be better like I try to stop and remember that it, it doesn't need to be better it is amazing the way that it is and my kids are going to grow up and remember these amazing days as a family. Yeah. So, oh gosh, that's so good. I was remembering just recently, we went on a trip to a conference we do for marketing, different marketing agencies. And we were trying to decide as a family, whether I was going to be able to go to it or not. You know, and my husband was even giving the option, like maybe he would stay home and I would go. There was just lots that were going into it. And I knew we had multiple trips planned this spring that is definitely out of the ordinary and not typical to our year. And just went to bed struggling. Like, man, I'm, is this going to end up, you know, like being terrible? Am I, they're still young. I shouldn't be leaving them. I shouldn't be doing these things. And I know those mindsets will spiral and going to bed too that way. It was just, for me, I engage with, you know, God a ton and just trying to ask those questions back to him about myself and the expectations on myself and talking to my husband and just, you know, kind of verbalizing because a lot of times I get stuck in my head where I just like going downward. And if I can just say it out loud, it helps me process. And, but I, I woke up in the morning kind of just sensing like, this is such a short amount of time and me going is going to build a creative thing that's in me as a professional. It's also showing specifically my girls and my boys, because I have two boys and two girls, my girls, what it looks like to have a career, what it looks like to itch something in my creative brain. And I was able to kind of, we ended up deciding that we both were going to go and it ended up landing really great. We had family that watched them and they had opportunities with their family members that they wouldn't have had if we wouldn't have gone. And there's been times where we decided that I shouldn't and there's seasonal things like that, but it was so important for me to take a step back and be like, I can't make decisions right now based on all of this worry and concern. I need to talk it through. I need to find what values are going to happen if I go, if I don't go. And just kind of felt like a resolve of like, I can't make decisions in that. You know what? I might miss a couple little things that happen in their lives during those days. And, but they're going to have so many different stories in their journey. And I've tried really hard, you know, with good boundaries to bring my kids into, like, I told one of my kids, this is hard for me too, to leave you guys. And my oldest was like, mom, this is, this doesn't happen that often. Like, this is such a cool opportunity for you. And she was able to verbalize that because we've created that in our family of just kind of working with each other and like, this mm -hmm. is hard and it's okay for things to be hard. And it's, you know, and are you going to be okay with that? But just bringing your family into it too has been really great for me to mm -hmm. not so internalize and think this pressure is all on me. Like, the, you know, it's not. And when it gets that way, I know something is off. You know, I'm, I'm relying too much on myself. I can't do this alone. I need help. I need to ask for help. When I can't get the dinner in time, my husband's always like, Becca, you have to tell me, like, I can help you with that. Like, he's just been good with that too, of just, I need to ask for help. If I need help at work, it's not all on me. That's why we have a company with different skill sets where I can say, I need help with this. And being able to say, I need help has been huge for that guilt of feeling like it's all on me. I'm not doing enough. I can't do it all, you know, and, and knowing that that's, that's okay, you know, and, and that kind of thing. So that's kind of what has helped me. Yeah, that's Love really that. good. Those are good. good. Yeah, those are good takeaways. I remember that. Ask for help and it doesn't have to be, what was it? Eugenia doesn't have to be perfect to be amazing. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. 
All right. Well, we're going to end this. Thank you guys for all of you that were able to join with us live and those that are joining in later, you know, feel free to send further questions. If you do have any that we weren't able to touch on here, or you are watching this at a later date and you have another question, we'd be happy to get you to the right team member that would be able to, you know, answer those, but a super thankful Jody and Eugenia for being here and being open to discuss these things. Anything else you guys want to share before we close out? No, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for running the show here, Becca. All right. Thanks yep. guys. Have a good rest of your day and your weekend.